Hey, what up, what up, what is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Crime of Returns YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming out. Really, really appreciate it. And welcome to the How To uh, Objects in Space tutorial series. Um, over the next couple weeks, these videos will be dropping um, occasionally. I'm trying to get one of these out every week, maybe, maybe a couple out a week. Uh, as I kind of teach people how to play this game, and uh, I, I have one for bounties that's uh, that's going to go up soon, and 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 we have a, a bunch of other ones that are going to come up on, on just how to do all these different things because this game is is pretty complex, it's pretty deep. There's lots of screens. What does all this shit do? Blah blah blah. blah. But today, today specifically, we are talking about navigating and flying our vessel. Now, this is not a traditional space flight simulator. We're not like in the Millennium Falcon looking out the window at all the stars and like just kind of moving the little like joystick around and that's how we fly. No, 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 no. This is done through all of our various monitors, screens, sensors, communications. We've got our um We've got our, uh, what do they call it? Excuse me, my helm computer right here. We've got, and this is our navigation computer. And this, this today, right here, is what we are mainly going to be focusing on. See, when I hover over it, it kind of turns a shade of bluish greenish. This is what we're going to be hovering on. I click into it, and I right click, and I go out. I left click, and I go in. All that kind of stuff, that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, right now, we are docked up at a port, right? We've got our little doors right here. Uh, to start flying, we got to close these, seal up our airlocks, come over to our main computer here, our main computer screen by using the arrow keys here, and click on our main docking control, which is our helm computer. You can see our generator battery is on the left. Uh, you can see that little green bar. We're going to go ahead and undock, and we will start flying. You can see down here, this is our main navigation map. We can move around with the arrow keys. Um, we now, as soon as we disconnected, all of a sudden our map came up and all of our little locations uh, represented by this on the map appeared, right? So right now we are at Lago Gas Port, right? That is where we are. By hitting space bar, you can recenter the screen, which is actually just this, this little square right here. Now this, this will be mapped behind this, but this is where you have a lot of your controls, right? This is a lot of controls, and we will get to that in a second. But main, the main thing we want to focus on right now is this this screen right all these very 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 many various things uh, going on right here so let's just discuss a few of these things because I think that would be really super duper helpful to just kind of like getting started right first of all what's this little thing in the middle this is the star the star of the system that we are in this the star's name is Leo and I can find that out by just clicking right on top of it it says star Leo Awesome. I can zoom in on that star by pressing the plus. Uh, I can uh, zoom out by pressing the minus key on the keyboard. And But it is the star. It is at the center of the system. Every system is labeled by the star label, right? So that's how we know where we are and what systems we're in. Great. Wonderful. Next, you see how we came out on this little, uh, this Lago gas port. This is where we were docked and we undocked all this. What is this? This is a nebula, and nebulas are made of different gases in the game, right? Some are dangerous, some are not. Some are electrical, and they will electrocute you, uh, and some are not. Now, this one is just a dark nebula, and it has no, uh, it has no properties that can damage us, right? And that's a good thing. And you know what, what kind of nebulas they are when you fly into them. But sometimes, if you have nicer scanners, it will let you know uh, what kind of a nebula it is before you fly into it. I am on a pretty shitty vessel, so I really don't know what kind of a nebula that exactly is before I go into it, right? So there's nebulas. Uh, the next thing is these little, these little like key looking, like downward looking key things, right? These are places we can go, outposts and places that we can go dock within the system. There's Columbus Control, there's Prefect Outpost, there's all these different places. And in the, in the, um, the map systems, which I will discuss in just a second, they will all be labeled properly and show up like that on our map. Now. Um, what else can we talk about? These are just little planets, which oftentimes you will see these outposts and stuff circling around for sure. Um, oftentimes they're, what else can I explain? Uh, 
that's pretty much oh yeah yeah yeah. so here is these are meteorites and asteroids and we do not want to go in here sometimes you have to navigate through them very carefully but they will do an incredibly large amount of damage to your uh, ships you want to avoid those whenever you can um and anything else and these are other ships notice how when i click on them uh they they can show me all this information and the reason they're showing me is because they have something called an iff and it is active on these ships, right? They are legal vessels flying. The IFF is very important, and we have one here we can deactivate and activate. Now, in, in map systems, which I will discuss, continue to discuss in just a second, uh, you are required to have your IFF on. So that's just a little note. We're not gonna go into that too much right now. But you're required to have it on for the authorities. And if we end up seeing an authority vessel, I will show you guys the difference there. Uh, but this is just a freighter class. You can see this, Leander class freighter, FRT stands for freighter, type merchant. That's the biggest giveaway, right? Because uh, this will say military or authority. If it's an authority vessel, it'll be unknown if, if there's a pirate, say, and they have their IFF off. Um, but yeah, so that's just the general idea. And of course, this little thing right here, I will go ahead and zoom in and hit the space bar again. This little thing is us. This represents our spaceship. This arrow represents the direction our hull is pointed in, and thus, if we pushed our thrusters on, that's the direction we would go. Um, we can, you can see, we can move this uh, using our RSS, which is excellent, uh, and we move that around. Of course, that does consume this, uh, our battery power, and you can see that. Uh, and we'll go into that in just a second. But this is the, you see how there's, it almost looks like Pac-Man right here? That's because this is our baffles. Just like submarines, ships like us can't hear behind us. We can't see guys behind us. Those are our baffles. And so we have a sensor gap here on anybody right behind us. And in this area, we can't see them on our sensors. And so that will come in handy later when, if you're doing bounties, or you're trying to avoid uh, pirates staying in their baffles is a good way to do it. Just a ton of different things, but that's just the, this is just the, uh, the icon for our ship. Now, let's get to actual flying. The first thing is the basic flight controls. And I will go over those very, very briefly, but you can also set your own. Um, but the basic flight controls are this. It's kind of a WSAD type of a situation, right? Except not in the traditional way that you'd think. Yes, W does start your burn to go forward, whatever direction your nose is pointed. I'll go ahead and hit W now. You can see we've started to pick up speed right here. This is our speed. Hit W again, and that kills the engines. You can now see we are moving forward. If I hit uh, D or A, which is A being the left and traditionally, and D with the right, that is moving our ship. And if I hit S, that stops the RCS. It doesn't stop me from moving. It stops the RC. It, it uses the RCS to stop the direction of I'm turning. Right. So. A, S, and D are technically just your RCS controls to control the direction you're going, and W controls your main thruster. Now we've reached our full speed, which was 1.2, as, as, as fast as this ship that I have can go, and that is what we're doing. So there we go. We have now reached our maximum speed. We are heading in this direction, and that's the basic controls. Now, if I want to uh, fully stop my vessel, I have to completely reverse my turnaround and burn the opposite direction. Well, this is space, there's nothing slowing us down, right? We have to stop. Now, normally, you can just go in here, use your handy dandy little autopilot, which we'll go over in a second, and do a full stop. But I have bound that key to F, which is, um, F does not have any binding naturally. So I can just go ahead and hit F, and my ship will automatically turn around using RCS, which uses a battery power, and then burn, which also uses battery power. And you can see I have a limited battery power there. And we have come to a complete stop. So there we go. Those are the basics of flying. And, um, you know, whatever direction you're pointed is the direction that your thrusters will push you. So just know that. And these little controls are going to be very, very handy for just kind of some basic movements. Now, let's talk about autopilot. Probably the thing you're going to rely on by far the most when you are flying, right? And it's it, and the reason for that is is because it's really really handy dandy in getting to certain places. For example, if I wanted, let's just say I'm I'm sitting out in the middle of space right now. I was just at Lago Gasport. Let's just say I needed to get to Columbus Control Trade, right? And the reason is maybe maybe I pick some stuff up over at Lago Gasport uh, for a contract and I need to deliver it over to Columbus. 
I can just go ahead and click on it. You can see I have it selected over here. Anything that you select, whether it be a ship or anything like this is gonna show up in your little thing. Here's an authority vessel, we talked about those earlier. They get very upset if you have your IFF off, if you're causing trouble by maybe firing torpedoes at people. And hey, actually great learning moment right here, guys. Look at right now, he's in my baffles. I don't actually know that this is where he is. He could be there, but he could have turned. My computer is simulating what I think he did based on his last bearing, much like ships in the sea or submarines in the ocean, right? Now, I, cause I really don't know, and you can see this too by looking at my solution. It, it stopped progressing and it's starting to a regress, and that's like a targeting solution, right? It's like a tracking, right? but I don't know where he is. If I turn my vessel, hey, there he is. He was actually pointed the other direction and burned in a different direction. See, I got updated information now. Now I have 100% of a solution, uh, and, and that gives me the more information. You see how he's in our baffles, very important, but anyway, using the autopilot. If I click on this, I can simply hit plot and you can see these you can see these hotkeys right here. If I just hit P, that's the hotkey. If I hit C, it clears it, right? And so some of these have built-in bindings already. But let's just say I wanted to plot and I wanted to go there. If I just go ahead and hit engage, it's going to automatically turn my vessel and burn toward the target until it is, uh, I'm at full speed, and it will automatically stop burning. Now, if you do the burn manually, it will not automatically stop burning when you hit max speed. It will just keep burning, and you wanna be careful because if you run out of battery power and you start burning, you put a lot of stress on your engine, and you don't wanna do that. And the more stress on your engine, the more chance for failure, failure, part failure, is, which is something we will cover in a separate video, repairs and parts, and what they all do and what they all mean. That is something we will cover eventually, uh, in a different video, but th for now, that just just know that you want to always be moving when you have battery power, not usually when you don't. Awesome. So, I'm moving this direction now. You can see it gives me an ETA on my autopilot, yeah, and and this little line like here shows that I am fully engaged on autopilot. I don't need to do anything, and this would get me there. I can cancel the autopilot. I can come to a full stop. I can do anything like that. But why would I want to do that right now? Because the autopilot will uh, turn me around, it will burn to a stop perfectly on the outpost, and it will dock me up automatically, right? But let's just say I'm really tired of waiting, I don't wanna wait any longer, 80 seconds. Uh, using the uh, little dash forward and dash backwards buttons right above an alt key on my keyboard, right next to the M, I can actually speed up time compression to a 4X normal speed. So you saw that, and go down to 2X in the upper right corner, and back down to normal speed up to 2x and do that. Now, it will automatically cancel if there are threatening vessels in the area or other other things like that. Oh, okay, so we just, you see that? We we found a, a target bearing th that um, with, uh, excuse me, bearing 300 with no IFF, right? So this guy right here, we don't know what he is, but he could be a threatening ship. We, we don't have a solution on him, so we don't know what kind of a vessel he is, but we know that he's running with his IFF off. That could be a potential pirate, but that is for another time. So now we are coming to a dock here. What do you know? We have docked with Columbus Control Trade and beautiful. So that is the basics of that. Now, if I wanted to leave this station, I can't just leave. I need to pay fees. Undocking permission required. I need to pay fees to get out of this. And that is something that you just need to know. So always make sure you got a little bit of coin on you. Now, I might be able to actually pick up a... Uh, uh, I actually might be able to pick up a contract maybe while I'm here, but either way, I always do this first whenever I dock to make sure I don't spend any money that I need to get the hell out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay the fees, request permission to leave, and I can leave now whenever I want. I'm gonna go over here and see if there's any useful contracts. Hmm, there is this one, but I have to go to Maru. I don't know, because uh, if I bring up my little handy dandy notebook, I still have a passenger I have to get to a, a location, I have a bounty I wanna do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that for now. But no matter what, that that is how I got docked in. Now, I'm leaving, fire up those doors again, go over to our computer, undock, and there we go. So there you have it, folks. Pretty much the, um, the basic flight controls of uh, objects in space. Pretty simple. You will get the hang of it when you when you uh, do it a little more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little manual burn here. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do is burn probably in this direction because I am currently on a mission 
to go over here to drop somebody off. So uh, if I want to do a, a special jump, I will do that a, uh, in, a, in a different quadrant than I am currently in. Uh, and this, this little, uh, actually there's one more thing we should definitely go over before we're done. So right now, earlier I said, um, this is the star, right? And this is Leo. Leo is a star a system that we're in. If I go to my cluster map here, I can see where Leo is. All of these systems right here, all of these are separate star systems where there are various things. Now, these ones that are all connected by these lines, what does that mean? That means they are connected by the jump gate system, which basically means any ship, regardless of whether it has a jump drive or not, can go there simply by going to the jump gates. In this case, there is a jump gate right here, Leo Magella. We are in Leo right now. This takes you to Magella. So if I go to the cluster, I can see Magella right there. So I go to that uh, just like I did um, any other thing. I click on it, I plot, I engage, I dock up, and I can go through the jump gate. Now, uh, let's just, for the sake of this, let's just do that really quickly. Well, not this one though, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and use my RCS to stop my UCI was rotating. Not there, we're not gonna go there. Uh, but just know that uh, that is how you get through those jump gates. Now, if I go back here, I want to show you something else. You see all these systems that aren't connected to the jump network. Those are more remote systems that don't necessarily have bases and places where you can dock and sync up and get all that kind of stuff. Now, the ones that are named definitely do. They have stations and stuff like that. But these random ones are remote systems, remote star systems that nobody really like, there's no, usually not many authorities. It's usually heavy in pirate activity, all that kind of stuff. So just know that. These ones are connected by a jump network and they are a little more legitimate, quote unquote, and these ones are not. And you will need a jump drive if you want to get to any of these things. We will cover jumping and jump driving and all that kind of stuff in a different video. Um, but this is an important map as well. So going back and you can switch it by going cluster and sector. This is how you switch between your two map modes. No big deal. Now, like I said before, I have a mission. I got to go over to Vast Star, but ah, my jump drive that I have in this, which is something you have to purchase throughout the game. I can't reach that right away. So I'm actually going to need to go here before I can actually get here. So that's something to think about as well as you go throughout the game. So that is really the basics of navigation. Now, the last thing I will men mention before I'm done, and this is a little more advanced, but I feel like it, it, it needs mentioning. Quadrants. As you can see right now, down here it says, these are my coordinates in Leo right now. These are my coordinates. I am in Leo and I am in quadrant B. It quadrant. So it, all of these star systems work, right? This is the center. This is A, B, C, and D. So if I wanted to get to, um, if I wanted to use my jump drive here, I'd have to power it up. But if I wanted to use my jump drive to go here, click on this and set this as my destination, it, my computer will now tell me, hey, you need to be in, in quadrant C, desired quadrant C. So, and if you look at your little map down here, which shows you the various stations and areas and sometimes some ships and whatnot, it will all start flashing the quadrant that I need to get into, A, B, C, and D. So this is how you know quadrants. And this will come in handy later on uh, with many different things, but just know that that's what I need to do. So actually what I need to do is I need to point my ass down, uh, ass away, but point my nose right down there. And we'll go ahead and burn a little bit until we come to our speed, get up to 1.2 go ahead and stop our burn to save a little bit of battery power and let our, let our batteries recharge and we are on our way to C which is excellent which is what we want to do now uh, like I said I will cover jumping in a different video but for now that is the basics of navigation and here we are we are rolling uh, oopsies I accidentally engaged my engine again um, so anyway guys I hope you guys found this really uh, useful just for the basics this is just the basics if you really want a, a better idea of seeing this in action please 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 check out that let's try it's kind of like the beginning of the story and it runs through some of the basics but you'll really kind of see me as I'm navigating through using jump gates all that kind of stuff but 
for basic flight and navigation, this is a great guide, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have learned something from this, if it's helpful, if this series has been useful to you, uh, a like, a subscribe, a comment, those would all be most appreciated. I just ask that you consider it. It helps me out. It helps me know that I'm putting out good stuff uh, and uh, just keeps me on the right track. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.